In this video, I want to do kind of a thought experiment that really illustrates some of the strange effects of special relativity and will at first glance look like there's a paradox and something wrong with special relativity, but we'll actually find that everything is very self-consistent. So let's say, uh, in the last video we were talking about length contraction. So let's say I had a car and I'm going to highlight my terrible drawing abilities. So I have a, let's say it's a limousine. Okay. So here's my limousine, and it's sitting there at rest, and I say that it is 10 meters long. Okay? And I have a garage. So here's, here's my garage. Uh, and it has two doors on either side. So here's a door, and I know you can't see it from this side, but there's a door on the other side. And this garage is 5 meters long. Then... We, we've talked about length contraction and what if I have a vehicle that's moving with a given velocity, it will appear to be compressed in the direction of its motion. So I can take this car and I can accelerate it and get it up to this high velocity and let's say it compresses down so it gets, gets a lot shorter and stouter so that when it's moving, it's only 5 meters long and then it can fit inside of this it can fit inside of this uh, this uh, garage and when it's in there for that one moment that it's in there I'm gonna say that the doors are going to shut and open very quickly and shear off their sharpened or something and shear off anything that's in the way so as I'm sitting here on the sideline right as the car gets in there it's compressed down to five meters and the doors open and shut very quickly shearing off anything that's in the way but according to our calculations the car should be small enough that it won't be affected and it'll just continue on its way out the other side but let's take a look at this from the perspective of the car so this was all in the reference frame of person a well, now let's look at what person B sees. So B is at rest with respect to uh, with respect to this car, so they will not see the car have any length contraction. They'll see the car being completely normal. So here's the car again. They're going to see the limousine being completely normal at a full 10 meters. And they're going to say, I'm moving at a constant velocity, or I'm at rest, actually, because I can, as long as I'm not accelerating, I can say I'm at rest. And it's the garage that's moving towards me. So they're going to see the garage moving towards me. Get lots of examples of my terrible drawing. They're going to see the garage moving towards me at this very high velocity. So instead of me being length contracted, this garage is going to be length contracted. So instead of being five meters, it's, we're gonna say we're going at a speed that it's uh, uh, such that the length contraction factor is 50%. Uh, so that garage is now only going to be two and a half meters long. So how in the world is this car going to be able to make it through without it being without it when the doors open and close without it being destroyed because in according to person a the car makes it through but it seems that according to person b the uh uh the doors are gonna are gonna shut on it well in order to uh in order to solve this let's take a look at some of our space-time diagrams and let's start by looking at we'll say this is the position of a and this is the time of a and these are going to be the two sides of the door. So we have the front of the door and the back of the door, which are at rest with respect to one another. And the car is going to be moving. So this is, uh, this is person B's perspective, and this is person B's uh, x-coordinate, position coordinate. So in this picture, again, B sees, uh, let me get a, 
let's go for a purple color, B sees this as being its 10 meter car. 10 meter car, but as I, as I do my length contraction, according to A, this will be only five meters and it will, it will make it through. But what happens when we look at, look at it from person B's uh, frame of reference? So here's, let me do that a little bit brighter. Here's B and the, the car is very long. So, so this will be uh, the, this is the front end of the car and this is the back end of the car. And the garage, that small garage is going to be moving with respect to it. So uh, it's going to be moving in the opposite direction. So that's the front of the garage. And remember, B only measures the garage as being about two and a half meters. So this is going to be much smaller. So this is, uh, this is A's world line in this set of coordinates. So we see, well, how is, how is this going to make it through? Because B is obviously, you know, bigger than our measurement for A. But what's important to remember is that if this is A, if that's its time axis, then its position axis is going to be this, is going to be this line right here. And it continues on, and this would be x of a. I know this is kind of in the opposite direction that we're used to drawing it, but this is just an illustration. So what B is going to see is they're going to see the door come towards them. And at this moment, when the front of the car is at the, is at the back of the, of the garage, they're going to see that door open and close just before the car gets there. But B is not going to see both doors open and close simultaneously. If you remember back to the video on simultaneity, people will disagree on what happens at the same time. So as the car goes through, let's see if I can just, uh, just draw this quickly. So from the car's perspective, uh, sorry, let me just uh, draw the car first. So we have the car, let's start this over. We have the car and the now small, uh, the now small garage. When the front of the car gets there, that's when that door is going to open and close. And a few moments later, according to B, this is a few moments later, when the garage is at the back, when the garage is over here, then the back door is going to open and close because A and B are disagreeing on what happens simultaneously. Both observers are going to see this length contraction happen. A is going to see the moving car, uh, the garage is going to see the moving car get smaller. But from the car's perspective, it's the garage that's going to get smaller. And we notice that at this point, from A's perspective, the front door closes right when the uh, right when the front bumper gets there, and the back door closes right when the back bumper gets there. The same things are happening here. In B's perspective, the front door closes right when the front of or sorry, the back door closes right when the front of the car gets there, and the back door of the garage closes right when the when right when the back of the car gets there. I might have mixed something up there, but uh, forgive me for that. So the events that happen at the same place and the same time are in agreement. But B and B prime, uh, B and uh, A will disagree on exactly when those things happen and whether or not they happen at the same time. So, so that's just, uh, I find a very interesting and instructful example of how these weird, uh, these weird effects can seem to make seem to contradict each other but when you take in all of the effects of special relativity they actually work together in in a very counterintuitive but a very interesting way